Good morning everybody and welcome to our second Sunday as Scattered Church rather than ga Gathered Church together. We hope that you're doing okay wherever you are at the moment and uh, I look forward to speaking to you this morning. We thought that perhaps you'd heard quite enough about the coronavirus over the last few days and weeks and so we've decided over these next couple of Sundays to carry on our theme focusing on Easter through the eyes of and so today I'm going to be looking at Easter through the eyes of Mary and later on this evening Martin's going to be speaking to you about Easter through the eyes of Peter. So in order to uh, talk about Mary at the cross I really need to take you back to the cradle. All those earth shattering events surrounding the nativity, angels lighting up the sky, a virgin becoming pregnant, shepherds turning up at the birth, everything that we think of um, surrounding the nativity and it just simply says in Luke that Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. Just such a simple way of expressing it. I wonder how many of you have a treasure box. Uh, I'm speaking to you from my living room and my treasure box is actually in the corner and we put in special drawings and poems and memories that we have in our treasure box and I always imagine Mary thinking about the events of the nativity and if you like getting out her treasure box and picking up the different jewels, the different experiences, the things that she took out of the secret place of her heart to look at from time to time. And she reflected on the events and the details and the words and the revelation of God during that time. And I wonder how many questions she asked herself, how can this Jesus be my son and also God's son? How, do, how does that all work out? I imagine that she thought to herself, who is he? How is this really going to work out on a day-to-day -day basis? Who's he gonna become? I mean, we all think that, don't we? And some of you have just had babies and some of you are expecting them and just thinking to ourselves, who is this child going to be? What are they going to be like? And looking forward to seeing that working out and all our hopes and expectations for them. And then right at the very beginning of his life, just on the eighth day, Mary and Joseph took their son Jesus to the temple to be circumcised. And they met two old people there, Simeon and Anna. And as Simeon held the baby Jesus, she, he said these really amazing words to Mary from Luke chapter two and verse 34. It says, then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Well, those are hardly the words that you want to hear at your baby's dedication, are they? I wonder how much she thought over those words. What's it all going to mean? How bad is it actually going to get for me? What, what does it mean that a sword is gonna pierce my heart? I guess she asked herself whether or not she was going to be able to endure the things that were going to happen to her son, though she really didn't know what those things were going to be. And tradition says that it's a little while later that the visit of the Magi occurred. The wise men, the three kings, as we're so familiar with them, and they brought, of course, their strange gifts, gold for a king, frankincense for a priest, and myrrh for burial, for suffering. And yet more questions for Mary. What's this going to mean? I mean, most people bring talcum powder or baby shampoo or something, don't they? But myrrh? Is what Simeon said really gonna come true? And, and what's that gonna mean for me? And how am I gonna feel about that? And is there anything that I can do that might actually change things? See, it seems to me that really early on, right from the very beginning, Mary had to start learning to let go, to let go of her special son, her firstborn son. She had to learn from right at the beginning that this baby was dedicated to God. He was God's son. And as he learned and he grew and he became increasingly independent, she had to learn what that meant. And she had to decide when, whether he was a boy or a man. Do you remember that day when he disappeared from them? And uh, when they eventually went looking for him and found him, he said, well, I'm in my father's house. What else did you expect? And she had to learn very early on to let go. 
It's hard to imagine, isn't it, how costly that must have been for her. This special child that had been entrusted to her. And how courageous she needed to be in order to be the person that God needed her to be at that time. You see, the word surrender for Mary was so much more than a word or a prayer. It had to become a complete lifestyle. From the moment of conception, through the crib and to the cross, she had to have a lifestyle of surrender to God. And as we think about the cross through the eyes of Mary, we see Mary watching her son walk to the hill of the skull to Golgotha, the ultimate act of surrender, of letting go. I don't know if you've watched the film The Passion, but I think it captures it so well as they see Mary along the route as Jesus is walking with his cross and lots of memories and images come into her mind of other times when Jesus has fallen over and scraped his knees and different things have hurt him and all those memories come together as she watches her son walk towards the ultimate suffering. It was the extreme really in being out of control of not being able to do anything, of being helpless and powerless. How much she would have wanted to run to him and look after him and rescue him and make things different, but she couldn't do any of those things. She just had to trust the Lord God and the things that he had said to her. And then that time came when the sky went dark and when the curtain of the temple was ripped in two. Those haunting words that she must have heard from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then later on, as Jesus said, into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. And finally, it is finished. And the soldiers came and they put a spear into his side and then it was all over. Still surrendering, letting go, putting it all in God's hands. In that moment, her grief, her fear, her disappointment, her fears that had all been damaged on the floor. When it all came crashing down, she chose to stay close to Jesus. She decided to hold on in the dark to what she knew to be true in the light. A life of surrender, a life of letting go, a life of trusting in God. And as I've reflected on this over these past few days, it struck me so much that we are being forced to let go, to being forced to be out of control of many of the things that we are used to being in control of, of maybe finding ourselves full of disappointment over things that we haven't worked out how we've expected, maybe feeling a sense of grief and loss and needing to choose to trust God in these times that he is above it all, that he knows what's going on, that he is in control even when we aren't, and just to surrender our lives in a new way to him and to let go of the things that we've been in control of and trust him to be in control. And perhaps this Sunday as we look at the cross through the eyes of Mary, we just need to remember to stay close to Jesus even when it's difficult and challenging and hard and heartbreaking, just to stay close to him and trust him and trust our Father God that he will bring us through to the other side to a place of hope and celebration. So I just ask you to reflect on these things through the course of the day and to come to God in prayer and to look again at the cross as we reflect together this Sunday. Maybe we could just take a few moments to reflect and to pray together this morning. So perhaps let's, let's pray. First of all, um, you might like to think about the things that you're finding it difficult to surrender right now, uh, to let go of control over. Perhaps it's your normal schedule Maybe it's um, meeting up with friends and family. Maybe it's the freedom to go out where and when you choose to. Maybe we could just lift those things before God this morning and be honest with him about the things that we are struggling to surrender right now. And talk to him about those things and perhaps the deeper things within our hearts that they reveal. Maybe this morning we need to make a 
choice to put those things into God's hands, put our own sense of control into God's hands and to let him watch over us. Lord, we thank you for Mary. We thank you for what we learn from her, from her submission and obedience to you, from her willingness just to have a life of surrender, of letting go, of trusting her Father in heaven. And Lord, as we look at your cross, we thank you that you completely and utterly surrendered yourself for us. We thank you that you put yourself completely in the hands of your Father and trusted that he was in control, even when it seemed that everything wasn't in, the, in control. And Lord, we pray that during this time where we don't have the level of control that we're used to, where things that we like are perhaps taken away from us, our privileges and opportunities, we pray that we'd learn to trust you more and to let you have greater control in our lives. I pray that in this period of time we'd learn to surrender ourselves more to you and to know you more and to love you more and to trust you more. In Jesus' name, amen. Just uh, also want to say to you that I'm hoping to be able to do some live stream Bible study looking at the book of Numbers um, over the weeks that are ahead. Um, so that we can interact a little bit over that as the people of God in the wilderness, in the in-between spaces. And I thought there would be some good lessons that perhaps we could look at together over these weeks that are ahead of us. So if you're interested in doing that, being part of that together with me, then perhaps you might like to drop me a line so that I know and I'll get preparing and let you know when we're going to stream those Bible studies together. Thank you.